Greetings, folks. It's time for part two of our adventures with decibels. Today, we're going to look at measurement schemes using decibels. In other words, a decibel-based voltage or power. So here's where we left off. We had two equations. We said the bell, decibel, version of power gain was 10 times the log base 10 of the ordinary gain. And for voltage, the, the decibel voltage gain was 20 times log base 10 of AV. The factor of extra factor of 2 here is, of course, because power varies as the square of voltage. And since we're in logs, that exponent turns into a multiply. For convenience, we can also say that factors of 2 in ordinary form are equivalent to three decibels and factors of 10 are equivalent to 10 decibels. Right. That would be for power and it's twice that for voltage. In other words, for voltage, we'll just make a little note here, All right? We'll say for power, And for voltage, it doubles up because of that uh, factor of 2. All right, so that's a nice little compact thing to sort of remember. All right, where are we going today? Talking about measurement schemes. Well, remember, G and A are just ratios. In other words, you talk about a power gain, you're talking about the output power versus the input power, right? One watt in, 20 watts out, well, that's a power gain of 20. Well, why not do the same thing, but instead of looking at a pure gain, why not just measure against some reference? So for power, I'm going to call this P prime, Instead of looking at G, the gain, we simply look at a ratio. So I'm interested in the, the power of, of you know, whatever it is I'm measuring versus some power reference. So if I choose a reference of, let's say, a watt, then the value I get back here is going to be a dB value with respect to one watt rather than with respect to the input signal. Okay, so I don't worry about the fact that, uh, well, it's one watt in, 20 watts out. That's, you know, going to work out the 13 dB. What I would say is if my reference is a watt, I would say the output's 20 decibels more or 13 decibels or, you know, whatever it is, uh, more than that reference. I can do the same thing with the voltage. So I'm going to talk about a V prime. And over here, we will be looking at some voltage versus a voltage reference. Now we just have to choose what we want for references. Well, let's take a look at power first. Uh, a very good reference. An obvious sort of reference would be one watt. Okay. You know, that's kind of a no-brainer. We do need a way of indicating what that reference is. And um, what we do in that case is we call it not dBs, but we call them dBW. All right. So the big W indicates I have a one watt reference. Other possibilities we might use. Well, you know, one watt's kind of a lot. How about we use a milliwatt, you know, for more typical sized, what we would call line level signals. That makes better sense. 
So we call those dBm, right? dBs with respect to one milliwatt. And even that might be really big if we're talking about, say, a signal coming in on uh, an antenna. So I could use a femtowatt, 10 to the minus 15th. Call that dBf. Now, same sort of deal with voltage. I would probably want to use, you know, one volt as a reference. And we will call that dBv. There is also something called dBu. Now I gotta explain what's going on here because it uses not one volt, but 0.775 volts. <laughs> Usually when people see this, they go, what? You know, that's pretty weird. Like, okay, milliwatt, femtowatt, I mean, maybe a millivolt, but like why 0.775? It's not even three quarters. It's not even 0.707, you know? Um, why is it called dBu? Ooh. Well, there's a good historical reason for why this exists. The milliwatt, for example, in, in communication systems, this was really common. But, you know, measuring power can be a little bit of a pain because you have to have a current and voltage measurement to get real power. Whereas voltage, you know, you can just take two probes, put it across something, you got your voltage. Well, at the time, 600 ohms was a very common input-output impedance in communication systems. So what smart people did is they said, look, we know what the impedance is. So why don't I just measure the voltage and then I can calibrate the scale based on the fact that it's 600 ohms. And that's what they did. They basically used the voltmeter. Knowing it was 600 ohms, they could, you know, just get a dBm, quote unquote, value because, again, you know what the impedance is. And then somebody said, well, what if I use this meter, but it's not on the 600 ohm system? What do I get? I'm not really getting dBm, right? Because it's not V squared divided by 600 ohms anymore. It's divided by some other impedance. So it's not really a milliwatt. Still, it's useful. Well, it turns out that if you calculate the voltage required to get you one milliwatt in a 600 ohm load, that turns out to be our 0.775 volts. So if you use a meter that's effectively a voltmeter, but calibrated to read in dBm, and you use it on something that's not 600 ohms, what you're really doing is getting a voltage measurement with respect to 0.775 volts. And we call it dBu. Now, why do we call it dBu? In the old days, originally, the V, capital V, went this, and this was referred to as dB little v, right, lowercase v. But, you know, you're talking to somebody on the phone or whatever, you, it gets confused. And the difference between these two things is uh, a little over two decibels. So mm, you don't want that kind of error. So, you know, a little u looks kind of like a little v, and it, but it is definitely different from v, you know. So if you're on the phone talking to somebody, you can say dbv, dbu, uh, everything works great. Right? So those are our references. Now, how do we use them? So... Now let's go back over here to uh, a little Python shell. And let's say I have a, a particular power. And I'll, I'll do the power ones first. So we want to do um, something along this line. Um, let's say we have a power of, uh, well, I used 20 last time, right? So let's just reuse that. So I've got 20 watts and I'm going to use a, a reference of um, one watt for DB for um, DBW. So I just took 20 divided by one. And there we go, 13. Now remember our, our uh, factors, right? 20 is 2 times 10. So we've got uh, 3 dB from the factor of 2. We've got 10 dB from the factor of 10. There's your 13. So this properly, we refer to this as 13 dBw, right? Capital W. Now, suppose we redo this, but now I'm going to use a milliwatt, and I'll just do it longhand here. 
I'm going to use a milliwatt reference. Well, that's going to be 20,000. 43. It makes perfect sense because it's 20,000. So that's 2 times 10 to the 4th. 10 to the 4th. Right, The 4th is 4 bells. So there's your 40. And of course, the factor of 2 is the 3. It's always going to be the case that DBMs are 30 more than the DBWs. Because right? it's the, the reference itself is off by you know, a factor of a thousand. So that will always be the case. Now, if we're going to do um, you know, femto watts, it's going to be even even more extreme because you know femto is 10 to the minus 15th. But again, you're typically only going to do that with very small signals. All right, what about going in reverse? In other words, um, we have a DBW value or a DBM value, and we want to... Uh, turn that back into watts, okay? Well, let's say we have uh, 16 dBW, eh, 16 dBm, okay? What do I do? Well, basically, we're going to take this formula and sort of unwind it. So if we had 16, the first thing we need to do is divide it by 10, and then we'll take the anti-log of that, and that'll give us this ratio, So, remember the anti-log, we're just looking at 10 raised to the power. So we were looking at 16, divide that by 10, and let's see what we got. Okay, virtually 40. So this is saying you've got um, a factor of 40 compared to whatever your reference is. Well, if we're doing dBm, the reference for dBm is a milliwatt. So this is saying that must be virtually 40, 39.81, blah, 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 milliwatts. All right, so 16 by itself. Again, if you did this um, you know, manually, it's 10 dB plus uh, the 3 dB plus the 3 dB, so that's 10 times 2 times 2, right? 10 times 4 is 40. And then it's just a question of, you know, what's the reference? So it's 40 decibels bigger than the reference. The reference is a milliwatt, so it must be 40 milliwatts. Consequently, if it was 16 dBW, the only thing that changes is the, is the reference. It's 16 is still going to work out to a factor of 40, um, but now it would be 40 watts. Yes, you can specify the output of... Uh, you know, your home or car stereo amplifier in terms of dBW. That's a very useful thing to do, actually. At one time, it was going to be the standard, but uh, for high powers, the dBW values are smaller, and, you know, my assumption is that manufacturers didn't like that. You know, big is better, right? Sure. Yeah, not really. Okay, what about voltage? This is not going to change much. If we were going to do, um, let's say, 20 volts, okay, remember we have to do a 20 log, okay, 20 log. So if I was going to use 20 volts for this, and I was going to use a reference of 1 volt, I want capital DB, you know, DBV, I'm getting 26. So remember, 20, okay, 2 times 10, and for our voltage version, Right, those factors, the factor of 2 is going to be 6, the factor of 10 is going to be 20, so 20 plus 6, 26 dB. Because our reference is a volt, this is going to be uh, 26 dBV. Okay, now what if we said dBU? I want dBU, so I'm going to divide this by the reference of 0 0.775. Because the reference is smaller, then there's going to be more of them, right? It's going to be a slightly larger value. So 28.2. So as I said before, there's about a 2 decibel, a little bit over 2 decibel difference between dBV and dBU. And if we wanted to go the other way, if I had a dBV value and uh, I wanted to find out what is this, right, in terms of volts, um, I go into lab and I get my voltmeter. Some voltmeters you can measure directly in dBV. Um, let's say I, I, um, I measure... 
14 dBV. Okay, how do I do that? How do I turn that back? Okay, so, um, oops. So I've got 14 dBV, and I have to divide this by 20, because again, we're unwinding this formula. So you, know, you would take the, the ratio, take the log, multiply by 20. So now we're going to divide by 20, take the anti-log, and that'll give us the ratio. So there's, there's my 14, divide by 20, take, here's the anti-log, and this will give us the factor. Right, so that's five, basically. So if this is dBV, then it's just five volts. If I was measuring dBU, then I would have to take this five and multiply it by this reference, 0.775. You know, and we'll get, you know, whatever that happens to be. I guess we can do a real quick printout here. We'll just, we'll just say it's uh, five point. 0, 1, 2. I guess that's close enough. Okay. And there you go. All right, just under uh, 3.9 volts would be the equivalent. So that's how we go back and forth. Now in lab, a really cool thing is uh, you can you can have an arbitrary reference. So uh, you know a, a good quality meter that will measure in dBV, dBU, will allow you to set your own reference. So what you do is you come into your amplifier. Maybe your input is, um, you know, uh, 27 millivolts or something like that. Now, ordinarily, you would go into the output and measure that output voltage. And now, that you, now you would divide that output voltage by your 27 millivolt input to get your voltage gain. Well, in the... Um, decibel scheme, what you would do is put your voltmeter on the input and you'd get some value, you know, for dBV or dBU, but as I said, you could usually set your reference. So uh, on some meters, it's just one button. You press the button and that becomes the reference. So now 27 uh, millivolts is zero dB whatever, you know, give it your own letter, right? Um, let's call it dBx. So I've got zero dBx at the input. Now I go to the output, and whatever the meter reads, it's using the X, the 27 millivolts is my reference. So whatever it reads, let's say it reads, um, you know, 10, right? 10 dB. Then I know it's 10 dB bigger than the input because the input was set at zero. Now, instead of dividing, that divide turns into a uh, subtraction. So the gain of my amplifier is 10 dB. Watch the units on this. So you've got, uh, you know, in, in this kind of thing, you got watts over watts, and you get a pure number. When you do it with dBs, if you subtract one dBV from another dBV, you don't get dBV because the subtraction is like the division over here. You lose the unit. In other words, 10 dBV minus 2 dBV is 8 dB. It's not 8 dBV. Okay? Just like, you know, 10 volts over 2 volts is a gain of 5. It's not a gain of 5 volts, okay? So same kind of deal, right? dBW minus dBW is, you know, dB, right? You can't obviously add or subtract dBW and dBV for different things, right? It doesn't make sense to add or subtract a, a volt to a, a, a wattage, okay? But that's basically how it works. So this is really convenient. In lab, man, this is this is just great. You can take your meter and just pop through a multi-stage amplifier, um, set that input reference, go through. You can see any attenuation because that automatically shows up as a negative value. Any gain is a positive value. Uh, you just read the meter and you got your gain. And there's no reason to go back to ordinary form. Right? You can just keep everything in decibels. Okay, so that our next thing that we want to look at is putting this together with frequency response and looking at what's called a Bode plot. See you then.